Greetings yes, everyone and uh, welcome to today's session. We are about to begin and uh, the other participants are just signing in. Our presenter for the day, Madam uh, Timothy Otrisha is here with us. Let's just give it a few more minutes to see that the other participants join us shortly. Thank you. I think we are already past five minutes past the hour of three. Um, today, for today's session, we shall have with us uh, Madam Timothy Trisha Njang as our speaker, and I am your host, Stephen Ankambom Kube. And uh, we shall have equally other co hosts, Madam Andong Benadette, who is here with us, and uh, Dr. Anselm, Anselm Michel will be joining us shortly. He's held up with uh, other pressing commitments at the hospital. So we'll be sure to have him join us very soon. And welcome to all the other participants from wherever you're connecting. If it's good afternoon, good morning, or good uh, evening, whatever it is, you're welcome. And please just make yourselves at home. And uh, we hope that this session is going to be a very interactive one. And we're going to both share our experiences as well as learn from each other. So I will be giving a brief introduction about uh, Madam Tim Teotricia. 
She's a business process solution consultant with uh, Deloitte Cameroon. And uh, she's an MBA holder from the University of Douala, ISEC Business School precisely. She's a writer, a co-author of poetry, anthology, titled Inside the Beyond. And several of her works featuring uh, in the Writer Space Africa's magazine. She's equally a winner of uh, the Young English Cameroonian Writers Awards, YEKWA, of the 2021 edition. She's an alumna of the Young African Leaderships Initiative of the Regional Learning Center of Accra, based in Ghana, of Cohort 415 of Business and Entrepreneurship Track. She is equally a United People Global Sustainability Leadership Champion, and she believes in the culture of excellence and constant self-empowerment. Beyond that, she has a very pretty smile, and I cannot fail to mention that. And uh, you will notice too that uh, she's going to be a very, very entertaining and uh, wonderful host and speaker for us today. So I would leave it at that, and uh, I would wish to hand over the floor to her to say a few words, and then we'll be sure to begin with her presentation of the day. Madam Tim Tricia, the floor is yours. All right, uh, Stephen, thank you very much for your for the brilliant presentation. And uh, I mean, I think your smile is better than mine, because when I do the comparison, somebody told me hey, your smile I, I outweighs mine, actually. <laughs> So um, thank you very much for the presentation and I'm happy to be here uh, to present for this program particularly. Uh, and I'll start by apolog apologizing. I wasn't able to prepare my PowerPoint to the end because of one or two commitments. So you will bear with me. I will be sharing the PowerPoint later on. But since I always want things to be excellent, I think we'll just go um, like that. Well. Whereas the PowerPoint come later, comes later. So I hope this isn't a, a great obstacle to, to this presentation. That's fine. You're the master okay. of what you've prepared. So please carry on. <laughs> All right. Oh, should I start? Oh, I, I don't know. Is any other thing when you protocol or so? Uh, Precisely no protocols from the Zen. Just feel free. Okay. All right. So greetings to everyone in the house again. And uh, I'm glad to be here. My name is Tim Tiotrisi and Stefan did the presentations as to where I work and every other thing. And what I'm passionate about is um, empowering others and sharing my experience because I think my experience is it's it's something one or two people could learn from. And I, uh, being present here as well, I want to learn from each and every one of you, as I believe you have experiences regarding what we'll be talking about today that could equally be helpful to me as a person and as a professional who is still a work in progress. So I'll start. Normally, my presentation was supposed to be divided into eight slides. So briefly, I will run down networking, the benefits of networking, uh, tips, how do we do that, uh, networking etiquettes, overcoming networking challenges, uh, networking tips for success, managing professional relationships, and a conclusion and a Q&A session for those who have questions. So given that I wasn't able to go through with the presentation, I'm going to start like that. And please feel free to stop me anytime you have a question and maybe a suggestion. So today's topic uh, was networking and professional relationships. Why did I, because Stefan sent me a list of quest of, of topics I had to choose from of things. And I particularly, there are so many I could talk about, but this one particularly uh, interested me because as a professional and where I am today, it's mostly because of my networks. And I sometimes believe I'm a good networker, a natural networker. I will say like that because generally it comes with me, for, with me it comes for me without uh, much effort. I will say so because people usually ask me, how do you do to get 
keep in touch with this or also person. Like now, if you ask me, Patricia, could you provide me with the contact of one or so somebody is a doctor or a deep field? I always have a number in my phone. And these people are always willing to help out. So those skills like natural network and birth. Above that, I think there are things you need to walk through regarding your own self and right to, to, to go through as a young person, particular thing in your, in your field. So I will start by sharing an anecdote. I don't know whether it's a, it's a personal story of mine. I enrolled, as Stephen said, I enrolled in an MBA in the, in the University of Douala. That's a two years MBA. And generally MBAs are expensive. I won't lie, they're very expensive. And I, I, I won't say I had all the resources available at the time to be able to, to, to pay in for the NBA. So I went in like to say, God, you, you know what you're going to do later on, you will provide as I go. So during my second year, uh, Family was like half this, this. They were they were able to pay the first year. The second year, family was like this. This this your thing. We don't know whether to lead me to so to to having a a network for my for my for part of my. MBA program help uh, like a, an incubator of startups, tech startups, and I was uh, working on how to find financing for these startups. And going through my network, I was doing some research online, and I uh, uh, found out about a, 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 a woman like called Madame Genevieve Yosa. She's a, an entrepreneur. She lives in France, Paris, and she has a business angel, like an organization, the business angel organization. Business angels are people who come together, uh, who have money. <laughs> they have the money and they want uh, projects where they could put in their money. Uh, like, you know, it's like a capital like ventures where they, 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 have, they won't have money and they want pros prospective projects or startups where they could inject their money for, for growth and eventually for profit. So I, I, I browse and then I discovered that she has in some way, she, she worked with my dad sometimes before. And then I told my dad, okay, how do I do to meet this lady? He said, oh yeah, I have her contact. So what I would do is that I will set up a meeting for you and her, so you go see her. My dad was director. He said, I want to have you here. You go see her and talk to her about what you have. So he set up the, the, the meeting. I went to her. I didn't really know what I was saying because it's really high profile lady. So I had to book the, she, he booked the, the, the meeting. I went, I met her. We, we, we had a discussion. I tried to be, uh, I mean, to step up my, my game by talking to her, conversing, and then telling her about this project I had of Bringing in, bringing together business angels and investors to these projects, these local projects, startup projects that we had. So she was really interested. Though at the moment she told me uh, she has stopped the investment, the aspect, but she was working on a project, her own personal project, uh, uh, as a marketer for billboards. I don't know, le régime publicité, as they call it in French. So billboards are generally what you meet, you, you see on the road, like. You know, for those who are in Douala or big towns, or many generally in towns, you see, uh, uh, you know, electric billboards with uh, publicity, advertising, ad advertisement, and so. And then you'll see sometimes you see on that they will uh, be, uh, I think there's out there are many other billboards, I just forget their name, media, something. And then she wanted to set up her own billboards where she, people will pay her to be able to put up their own their advertisement. Like companies pay these people to, uh, to put it up, to do the advertisement for them on the billboards. So she wanted, and she wanted somebody who was going to do a marketing, uh, so somebody was going to do a marketing um, a research, a market research for her regarding that. Like, like what are the opportunities? What does the market hold for her in this business? And she asked me if I was able to do it. I said, I had no idea at the time what 
a market. I knew I, I knew what the market research was, but I had never done a market research before in my life. So I said, okay, why not? I'll use this opportunity. So I did. She told me, okay, you go work on it. And we didn't talk about payment or anything. I just said, okay, that was holidays, and yeah, it was a project. It's something that could challenge me. So I decided to work on it. I started working on the on the document and sent her then when I finished the project, I submitted. Uh, then she asked me, how do I pay you? I was like, oh, well, I didn't do a planification or quote in my mind about you were doing the master's. I said, yes, okay. I'm going to take care of your of part of your fee for next year. And little did she know that my I was in an MBA and the MBA was really expensive. Though I told her that, okay, that's the issue. She said, okay, that's no problem. And it was substantial money, I would say that. And that's how I got part of my fee paid for my business studies, my MBA, and because of a relationship. So generally what I'm going to present today I mean, if there are reactions, I would like people you could um, stop me and ask questions or so react, so I won't be talking alone. <laughs> so, um, what what I'll be saying or talking about today will be I'll weave it around this story particularly because so many things came in play, things that I didn't even know I had done. But Bush helped me in this particular relationship. So I'll start. Yeah, excuse me. Yes, so I will start by defining what um, what is networking. So, the process of establishing and nurturing relationships with individuals in your industry or related fields. It involves connecting with colleagues, mentors, industry experts, potential clients, and like-minded professionals. And networking is not just about exchanging business cards, it's about building meaningful relationships. So uh, we generally know people, like we know people, we have relationships, we have people around us, but how then do we capitalize on these relationships for them to be potential uh, networks Oh, on, on which was, so how do we make it such a way that the people are so benefits of networking? Uh, you know, like I said, this is like from the example I quoted, the benefit I had from networking with that lady was that I got part of my <laughs> That's a financial benefit, but as well, you could have a, a, a networks where you not only have but financial payments. For example, uh, you work actually; it's a collaborate at a very high skill level. In such a way you couldn't understand. People will share opportunities with me because they know, okay, this is her line of activity. And if I find such an opportunity, it would be great for me to share with her. People I've never met and they commit to helping me opportunities when they know uh, I, I, I might be interested in. And I have, a, for example, a case like somebody like all of you that you need uh, this pattern with the person or sharing ideas or, or so. So networking gives brings you opportunities. Equally, networking brings you knowledge sharing. You gain insight into industry trends, best practices, and valuable information from experienced professionals. That's when your network is, uh, I mean, you network with people who are greater than you professionally. As well, let's not put aside networking with people who, on, who are with you on a linear base. Those are people who are around you, are your friends or people you, you communicate with daily. Just have to see, we just have to see how to step up our relationships with them to make it uh, more, more beneficial for every other party. And networking as well helps in personal growth because networking helps you develop interpersonal skills, confidence and self-awareness. They generally say 
uh, you are the product of the people you mm -hmm. surround yourself with. I don't know the product of the the three people or so. I don't know if you correct me if I'm if I'm mistaken. But you are the product, the sum product of the people you surround yourself with. So they will say if surround yourself with dumb. Sorry, it seems the host muted me on only. Are you getting it, please? Yeah. Hello. Sorry about that. Okay. I wanted to mute some other person, but I mistakenly muted you. Carry on. All right. <laughs> okay, thank you. So I was at the level of where, where I was talking about uh, knowledge sharing. So no, yeah, I think your line two is breaking up because I don't networking know if it's I would say you you some of the people with whom you connect every day the people around you so i was saying if you if you surround yourself with people who are dumb is it is it better now can you get me get me yeah it's better now okay all right so i was saying if you surround yourself with people who are not a reflection of what you, you want to be or the or what or the goals you set for yourself or people who have not yet attained what you wish for yourself then Change your location a bit, Madam Patricia. So, networking helps to develop interpersonal skills, confidence, and self-awareness. Because when you see other people doing these things, you okay. Let me try to do some movement. Just let us know if you're in a better place. And it's really so I, I will continue from where I was. I was so I was talking about the importance of having a support system and your network network just permits you to have such. And given our environment, it's always good to have personal high pass, as I call it, people who are there for you no matter what, who are there to encourage you through your strides. And having a, such a network is good. People who are equally there to tell you where you're, you're getting things wrong or to help you just get on the right on the right track. So that's important. And equally business growth for those who are really good, who are entrepreneurs, uh, or, or who, who wants to go, go into entrepreneurship, having a network uh, uh, can lead you to partnerships, collaborations, and increase business prospects. So, and generally, when you start a business, your first clients are those who are around you, and your first clients are your network, and your network refers you to other people when you do well. And yeah, so that those are the benefits of networking. If I summarize this, I'll say I'll talk about opportunities, knowledge sharing personal growth, having a support system, and then business growth. So if we're clear with that, I'll go to the next point, which is networking channels. How do I network? How do I do to, 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 to network? Then what is, how do I do this? You know, because we talk about network, network every day, but how do I do this? 
networking can happen through various channels. And we, I think we all uh, know one or two of these channels. The first one is in-person event, in events. So we have seminars, conferences, trade shows, and networking events. I, I am very sure most of us have attended seminars. We have gone to conferences. We have gone to trade shows. And equally, the events which are just called networking events, just come and meet people and you talk and share and everything. So these are places where you can eventually network. And that's why I know people who generally refuse to go to these conferences. I have kids, sisters, and most of the times I always tell them, you have to go out, like don't go out only to, I mean, no, it's good to have leisure time or so, but when you have free time, you could as well try to go to places where you have the seminars, you have conferences, you, you generally have the opportunity to meet very good people. And when I mean good people, I mean people with great standards, people you could actually look up to whose lifestyles are very interesting and out of the common, out of what you see every day. So, uh, those, the, the, if you if you you haven't done this or you're not doing this before, please just try to see how you could upgrade by attending most conferences and seminars which interest you and where you think you can meet potential people who could help you in your project. Networking as well, you could do it on online platforms. Today we're in a digital world and everybody has a social media handle, so. Though uh, most there are most uh, uh, so social media platforms which are not very prone to networking, uh, and which and most which which are very very much adequate for networking, and these I will talk about LinkedIn. I don't know if you don't have a LinkedIn provider today and you're a professional or you want to flourish in a particular field, then I don't know what you're doing. And this I always repeat to my younger ones or to any other friend or person who neglect this network, the potential of LinkedIn. I wouldn't like, there are so many things like, before getting to the company, before working with Deloitte, where I'm working presently, I started by talking with people in big fours through LinkedIn. When I was applying, I'll go to my LinkedIn, I'll search any other, any person who works in the big four I'm applying to and who uh, is on LinkedIn. Even if I'm not connected to you, I'll send you a message. I'll connect with you, i send you a message. Okay, I'm applying to your company. Could you give me tips? What do you think I could do to be able to? And that's how you work it out. And LinkedIn is so great because you've give, they've given us the possibility to meet people we're not able to meet before. Remember when we had to drop physical applications or maybe just send through an email, they never reply you. Generally, most of them don't even reply you. They don't tell you what to do. Or maybe when you go drop physically, you will never do, you'd never had the opportunity to meet the HR manager or maybe meet a, a person who could actually influence the process of your recruitment. So you could drop, drop it at the secretariat and then your head just annoys the secretariat and then she packs it somewhere and your CV or application never gets to where you, you expect it to get, though you might be qualified. So we link in, we have the possibility to meet the managers, we have the possibility to meet the directors, the associates or whatsoever. And we are just a message away, like, okay, it's just a, a hello sir or good morning or commenting or something. So LinkedIn has made, has made it so easy for us and it's a, a platform with so much potential that we could leverage on, on as youths and young people on our growth, on our growth path. And uh, professional forums and social media groups. So it's good, like if you're interested, for example, in cooking or I don't know, you want a, a business in a particular field, there are social media groups where you could meet touch people who could help you with ideas on their businesses and so. And your workplace as well, for those who are working and equally maybe internships. So where actually you go out, your colleagues, supervisors and internal events are good places where you can network. Community involvement, very, very important. Involving your community gets the opportunity to meet people around who, who are very who are pot potential people, I would say. For example, meeting Stefan, it's through a community involvement. There are so many other people I met and then who are reliable to me today through my volunteering activities, through, through, through uh, the events I went to to help us. So. so it's always important around you if you find something, because me, I don't relent in volunteering. If I have the time to do it, I'm always available because I actually call them my things. Those are things I'm interested in. And be it environment or women empowerment, those are, I mean, particular things are actually um, uh, dear to me. 
uh, courses or paths I really wish to follow. Those are things I, when I have involved or things I could, community involvement or activities, I don't hesitate to go. So as well, those are where you could actually build or have the opportunity to build great networking. Are we together? Are you getting me? Is my line breaking or all is good? All is good, perfect. All right, thank you. So the next point I will be elaborating is on is building strong professional relationships. How do we do it? When we talk about networking, networking is not about having to squeeze from other people or you no, know, having people available, readily available to maybe write, uh, uh, recommend you for a job or people who are readily available to, to offer you a job or an opportunity or readily available to send you these things. We have to work for these things because everything, you know, you need to work for them. And so the first, and actually they are things you need to nurture, like characteristics you need to nurture as a person to be able to benefit from your network. The first one is to be genuine, be authentic, sincere, approachable when connecting with others. Well, I know that people who generally, I mean, go out there to try impress or maybe show things that are not them. Because you go out and then maybe uh, for one reason or the other, you're trying to, to, to prove a point or prove that maybe, okay, you are still, for example, uh, a job searcher or maybe trying to get, learn a good opportunity that might change your life. But you show online or outside, you show a picture of, of who you are not. You know, you talk about, you pomposely talk about yourself or things. And generally when people see such, they might not think that an opportunity will interest you. So be genuine in the way you are as a person, the way you show yourself out there. I mean, it's not about belittling yourself as a person, no, but actually just showing yourself as who you are, like, okay, this might interest you. So, so that, that, that's really important for you to work on. And that goes with sincerity. And then equally be approachable. You, can go, you won't go to an event or maybe you want to network. You go to a conference and at the end of the conference, when they tell you, okay, this is the time to network. I mean, generally they give five minutes or 10 minutes between the conference for you to, to talk with one or two people. You might identify somebody else. There's, somebody, there's a mic that is out open. This person could just close the mic. Mm, yeah, I think, okay, that's great. Thank you. So you might identify a particular person that, um, that wh whose profile interests you. No, don't sit in your, on your spot or maybe tell yourself, okay, I'm not going to do this, but walk up to the person. That could just be the work that's going to lead you to land you to your next job, or maybe the work that's going to land you to your next market opportunity or business opportunity. Just to go talk with them, I mean, genuinely talk with them about what you're doing or maybe where you think they might help you. Equally, the next point is active listening. Pay attention, show interest, and engage in meaningful conversations. So I want to point out the meaningful aspect of it. So yeah, it's very important because the way you come, people take you the way that way. Because if you come in a way where you're coming up to somebody and then you are not actually addressing them in a particular way that could interest them, then they won't they won't be able to, to conceive actually what you want. For example, I'll put an example. Somebody writes to you online through a, a social media handle. They've never met you before and then you come with a hi, stop there. Then they expect you to say hi. Okay, the polite people will say hi to respond. And then they'll be like the other adject adject adjectives, I'll say. Like, uh, the, 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 I would say in the French, like somebody will write and they say ma chérie or uh, bonjour, no, ma belle, things like that. How do you expect me to respond to? So generally those people you block, I block them. You cannot so whereas the people the person might have had um maybe help needed help in a particular way or needed or, or maybe I, I would have been having something the person wants but just the way you come to me actually makes me not want to talk to you and this is the network you're missing you know there's this is a network you're missing so it's always important to to engage but and then you engage in a meaningful way state out your point clearly and then politely why being genuine and then wait on the person to, to, to get to you. And mutual benefit, that's the next point. As I said, it, networking is not about squeezing the other person. It's not about, okay, I have, this person has what I want, so I'm going to get it. No, it's about mutual benefit. Like, why do I have as well that I could give this person? For example, getting up, you, you, you might have a mentor or 
a professional you look up to and then you write to them one morning and hello sir i hope you're good uh, i know your program is your schedule is tight i know it work stresses you out so this was a, a, a message just thought of reaching out to you today to greet you and wish you well for the day I won't, I bet with you that this message, message my thing is small, but it actually plays a great vital role, you know, because generally you, you don't have much to give. Let's say, okay, the person has what you want, so you don't have much to give. So you see, a, you show them a way that actually you're interested in what they do, you're interested in them as a person. And before now, any other things come coming in with it. You know, so, because for example, I'll, I'll, if I quote the example, I, I just gave when I started my speech, the lady, the, the entrepreneur, Madame Genevieve, when I went up to her, I had another plan in head and she didn't have an opportunity for me then. Then she told me about her, her, her marketing company and she wanted somebody to do a market research. She said, okay, do you do it? I said, yes. I didn't talk about monetary part of it, no. I said, okay, let me do this. It's a way for me to learn. So there I gave something. I gave her that market research. I gave her my time to do it. Though I didn't even talk about the compensation. And I didn't, I couldn't imagine that compensation was going to be her paying my uh, part of my MBA program. So you see, uh, it's always important to, 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 to look at the mutual benefit part of it. Like, what can I bring this person? Even if they don't ask, tell your, ask yourself, what can I bring to them that equally might benefit them? When you network as well, the next point is follow, following up. You know, generally we, we, we get numbers, we collect cards and we come and store them. Whereas these people might be, you know, you know if we collected the, the information in the first place, it means their profile actually interested, or interested us in one way or the other. It's true that generally other people make these mistakes of just collecting any person's number or get connecting with any other person just because you, you feel that, okay, the person has this particular thing or this edge. But I think uh, refocusing your network as well is impo important regarding what you want to achieve for yourself, where you want to get to, or what the person has that you think you want, or maybe qualities you think you want to as well develop as an individual. So it's important uh, as well to, to to follow up on, on these prospective networks you have. And then maintaining your relationships, nourish your network regularly through check-ins, sharing relevant content and supporting their endeavors. If you follow somebody, you, you could like their page, not only, you know, even friends around you networking, their friends are, your friends have businesses, your friends have uh, projects they, they engage in and they need your support. So these are well, as well, this is a great network. Imagine you helping them in one way or the other, uh, liking their business, promoting, sharing, that's your network and that's how you actually give them as well from what they, they give you. So yeah, I hope this point out, it's very important because nourishing your network is very important as well. So the next point is ne networking etiquette. So like every other thing, it's important to have uh, standards. You know, don't overshadow somebody or don't overtake somebody's space. It's always important to have etiquette when it comes to networking, like every other uh, relationship. You know, for example, if you're married uh, or you have a, you're engaged in, the, in a courtship with somebody, you know that you know, you know that certain standards. You know, this person likes this, this person doesn't like that, and that things I shouldn't do. So, same, it is the same thing when it comes to networking, because especially professional networking, don't overshadow somebody, don't get too much of their space, give them the time, you know, and respect their space so, and yes i was talking about time be punctual and respectful to others to other people's time during the working engagement yeah so if you have to meet up with the network or you are a business meeting or something or maybe an opportunity we should strike and then they give you okay let's meet for example at say three o'clock at this particular spot please i beg with you try to be on time try to be at to be there at three uh, uh three three p.m yeah. And then it, it shows, uh, actually, uh, being on time shows you who as a person you are. You know, it shows who you are as a person. And equally, it shows the other person that you respect them as an individual. It's unfortunate that in Cameroon, we have very poor, uh, poor ethics when it comes to timekeeping. That's very, very true that we really have poor ethics when it comes to timekeeping. And, you know, working on ourselves every time to, to try to respect timing is important because coming to networking 
it, it actually shows, you no know, people find it disrespectful when you're not on time. So, it, so it, it's very important. And the next one is dressing appropriately when you wish to meet a network, when you go on conferences, the way on, uh, generally said, um, the way you present yourself actually tells much about you, about who you are, but it actually equally depends on where you find yourself. So if you want that people should take you seriously, when you go to conferences or seminars or you, know, you go to these places, dressing appropriately is very important. You know, how do you show up there? You know, are you, and respect the events dress code as well. You you go into a dinner a dinner also you won't dress in, in a way that's too corporate. You're going to a corporate event. You won't dress as if you are going to a cocktail event. So it's always important to respect such things. So you people will be easily connect with you. And business cards, you know, having a professional business card is important today with the uh, with you know, with online network uh, with technology and online platforms is very important. For example. For me, on my CV, you won't, you always see my LinkedIn profile or my LinkedIn link on my CV. For you, so okay, that's where you could connect with me and people as well today. You know, sharing business cards, you know, cards could get lost, so it's even important you could have. Okay, yes, my link. Yeah, you could link me here also. That as well is important. That's it's important to equally have LinkedIn accounts. And yeah, I was talking about that digital presence. Maintain a professional online presence and ensure your profiles are up to date. Maintaining a professional online professional is very important because people just post anything and nothing so if you want your network to take you seriously if you want the next your next um employer to take you seriously if you want your next business partner to take you seriously through the network you're having now it's important what you post and then i bet you see that most of these people take time to do their research they do their due diligence they go check who you are and your online presence that's where they get so so the way you show up yourself, the way you, you, from your profile picture to your profile summary, to your experience and everything, to what you share, what you post, it's very important. I, for one, my Facebook page, if you tag me in something that is not in my line of interest, sorry, I'm distagging myself. I will untag myself from that post because my profile has to be clear. It has to, be, it has to represent me as a person because that's my online personality. For LinkedIn, I know what I'm sharing. I know what I'm posting. And equally, I do a lot of review on what I'm posting. If I have to review post in English, for example, I make sure my English is of standards because I don't know who is reading. And what I read, when people read of you, they actually, it tells them like they, they, they do a conclusion on your, on your personality. And I don't want anybody concluding anyhow on who I am because of something I mistakenly did or maybe something I didn't review or maybe posting any or, any or anything on my post or my profile. So it's very important what you, you, you post, the things you're interested in. Then what are they? If you're interested, for example, in setting up a business in the, in the catering industry, and you, your post actually will have to portray somebody who's interested in that particular line of business. You will talk about receive, uh, different uh, uh, meals or dishes or sharing about these things. You talk about, uh, uh, how they call this, about how people could do to keep healthy through eating this food or so i mean things that actually portray your but your business in such a way that people will feel comfortable having to buy your service so it's always important what you show out there what your profile looks like so do lots of cleaning like if you have the just try to check clean it up and equally check on who is your friend or so you know get to those people who have connections that could help you out because you could share something somebody shares and then you can actually land in on the page of the person on the person you might want to connect with or maybe who has your next job opportunity or just opportunity so that this is important so the next point i want us to emphasize on is how to overcome networking challenges you know it's true that it's not everybody who has the, the skills to network people find it really difficult to get to other people to, to be able to get out there because of one insecurity or the other. So how then do you get to, 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 to overcome these networking challenges? We'll first talk about the introverts. It's not easy <laughs> for, for people. Like if you know introverts around you, generally they don't do much of talking. And networking actually, people generally think is, you know, it's true that you need to do the talking, you need to, go out your or go out of your way as an introvert to get to people you need to try to connect so 
you, as an introvert, you could practice networking in smaller, in smaller groups. You set achievable goals and take breaks when needed. You know, as an introvert, it's true, you need your space. So you could just consider, you know, starting with a smaller group of people, you know, and in, in then moving out as you get comfortable. And then with this group of people, you set achievable goals like, okay, what do I want out of this network? At least you're sure that equally you are, you're getting to that, that goal by networking with these people. And when you feel that you're oversaturated, you take a break. You try to move out, you take a break, then you keep it, you try it again. Then people equally as scared and fear, the fear rejection. And it's true, getting out there is not always easy because you, you don't know how people will react to you coming up to them. And then the way somebody reacts to you might shut you down inwardly in such a way that you're not, you don't feel again to get to other people. I have cases like that where the way somebody reacts actually uh, gives you, I mean, gives you a very poor impression about yourself and makes you no, in, in, you want to protect yourself by not wanting to go out there again. And you and, and that makes you, you shut down completely. So you, you, you just have to remember that not everyone you approach will become a connection and that's okay. So yeah, not everybody you approach will become a connection and that's very, very okay. You have to tell yourself that and then don't take what, how they behave personally. It's not about you, it's about them as people. So you have to put that in mind and move on. The next point will be building rapport. Find common interests or shared experiences to build rapport with your new contacts. So like, oh, I just met Mr. Dis. Um, I, I, I want to, I wish to, to, to share this. I wish our network grows. Then what, what exactly, what are our common, like what do we share, what experience might we share together that could actually help us build the relationship? I will talk about a, a network I met, uh, Vaola, 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 she's, a, uh, she's the co-founder of Obamba Solutions, which is a, uh, a fintech and equally venture capital firm. She's an impressive lady, way older than me. She's actually way older than me and her experiences. And I mean, she, as a person, she's some, so she has, uh, she embodies the qualities I appreciate. I love the way she talks. I love the way she interacts with people. So with somebody who, with someone whose age group is that far away from mine, you know, almost 20 or 25 or 30 years difference, how, what would I tell her? What, what, what will we talk about that actually makes such a way that I keep this connection? So what I did is that I actually tried to find points in which, because I know she's interested very much in what it, when it comes to capital uh, raising, when it comes, what it comes to, to, to private companies, to startups in finance, fintech companies. So maybe when I have a question or maybe I have a data about that, I just try to update her about it, I send it to her. Or maybe if I have a question, for example, when it comes to business or how to be, I write to her and she's very happy to answer me. She will gladly tell me, okay, what she thinks or so. So that's, that's a way to build rapport with your contacts. And I will call you cite another person, Yuri, Benkum, she's an entrepreneur as well. And, and the same, her age, we're not age mates, like I said, she's in a, an age group that's greater than mine. And it's the same thing, the same process. We talk about things that are common, like she's interested in how to make money, like side incomes, how to make money through your skills. And when I have questions about that, I get to her. And I bet you that I actually give contributions that equally help her. And she will tell me, I will talk to her, you know, through my own perspectives and my experiences, what I think. And yeah, we usually have conversations as if we we're two friends or maybe we're going to the same school or something. So try to find out those things that interest your contacts and then build rapport on them. So I hope you're online. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to, to stop me so we could discuss or so. What I will talk about now is how to build tips, tips for networking, like what are the networking tips for success? For you, for you to, to benefit from your network, from the people around you, how do you do it? So the first one is to set goals. Define what, to, what you want to achieve through your network and create a plan. 
this is very important. And actually, you make you feel that your network is beneficial to you. Set goals regarding that particular network. What do I want from this network? What do I want to benefit? What do I want to gain? What, what goal do I have to achieve through this network? It's very important. You know, it won't come to you in the first in the first conversation or maybe the first contact. But as you go, you will find out that that network actually is helping you one way or then you could redefine the path of that network. I, for example, and then don't forget that networks could equally get outdated. Like they could actually fulfill their purpose and later on you don't find, later on you grow naturally into friendships or something that's more deeper. I don't know. So because I have that case, I have a, a mentor I met uh, when I was um, my second year studies, I had a project. I was doing an online, I had an online blog where I actually write about entrepreneurs. So I got in touch with so many entrepreneurs and he was among. I was doing their profile, I was profiling them on my page. I write about their, uh, uh, their works. I talk about their accomplishments, I share. So I got to him and he was and he, he was living in Germany. He was very interested, like, oh, see this young girl, see what she's doing. This is interesting. It's not, you don't find young people around doing the same thing. So he was, he said, okay, I'm going to set myself out to help you. And he he was so such advice on how I could go about my business model. Because for him, it was he saw it as business, though I was doing it voluntarily, voluntarily and I was doing it out of passion. He said, this is how you could do to, to develop that business model. This is how you could do this. This is how. And then equally, he said, okay, I will support you. We, we will go, we'll buy, I'll, I'll buy you a domain name so you won't use a free domain name. I'll buy you a domain name so you could do your publications. That that make you more serious. And then you, you will get to meet, meet people. You could equally get to sell that, that, that skill or sell what you're doing. So at that point, at that level, he was of so much importance to me. At that, that was the network that I actually needed to encourage and support me and equally help me to, to, to uh, how will I say this, to channel what I wanted to do, if I say it like that. But in the long run, I actually stopped the blogging and I didn't, and, and, you know, our networking still continued, you know, we, we found other ways to grow. And today it's not just the network, we are friends though he's way older than me like <laughs> but he's a mentor he's another brother and uh, and actually we've gotten to a level where we even interact interact fa through with family because i get to know his family so you, you see naturally this network has grown into more than networking it's been grown into mentorship it's grown to friendship so it's very important for you to set goals and then you walk you walk yourself through your network be proactive take initiatives in attending events and reaching out to potential connections that I said already. Go out of your way, get to meet people, talk to people. During events, don't sit on your spot. Spot the people you are interested in and shoot your shot. It's very important, go to them. Even if they feel unapproachable, no, it's true that other people were unapproachable, but they might feel unapproachable, but when you get close to them, you get to realize that they're open people, that people were very, very easy to go. So don't be scared get to your networks and diversify your network as well. Connect with people from various industries and backgrounds for a broader perspective. Yeah, so I, as I, and for me, what I work is, what it works that depending on what I'm interested in, uh, you have, you might have so many lines of interest like I do. I'm interested, I'm a writer. I'm interested in business and helping businesses grow. I love arts. Uh, I, I love uh, volunteering. I love advocating. So in this different aspect of my personality or who I am, I equally wish to grow my networks uh, and depending on what I want to develop as an individual. So it's important to diversify your networks. You could diversify this, your different line of interest for you not to, to have to embrace everybody or so. But having a, div a broader perspective might enable you to see the world through different lenses when you get to know people of different backgrounds. It's always important. Know somebody, though you might be interested in arts, you get to know somebody who is into technology, you know, and then at the long, in the long run, you could might be involved in the project where you need somebody, you know, you're doing an arts project which needs some technology. You might be interested today, we talk about financial technology, for example. So financial people are connecting with tech people to bring solutions to people. So, you know, at some point, we always have a place where you could come, the, the, the road school, you know, the junctions could meet, like a junction, I'll say. And the next is before you get gift, 
down. Give before you get. As I said, it already. That is how you nurture your network. Don't only think. Look at your network as something you have to squeeze from. For example, despite the fact that the people might be way financially better than you you are or maybe professionally or maybe i mean in every other sense when you look at them you're like okay what can i bring to this person that they don't have yet so offer help and support to others without expecting an immediate return and i'll get back to the story i told you at the beginning i was offering help to the lady for her market research for the company and i didn't expect anything in return i was doing it without really expecting something and then it just came up that yeah she decided to pay half of my mba so you have to be genuine about it. That's about being genuine. And, you know, before you, you, you think of getting, give it, give, 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 give yourself, give your skills. And that's even a better way for you to sell yourself because giving those things is not really giving because you're showing, you're showing what you're capable of doing. And I bet with you, if you show and do well, people will trust you. And when they trust you, at some point in time, with trust comes payment. I won't lie you because you're good at what, in what you do and you easily sell. Like you propose, people could equally reference you and propose you for job opportunities or so. Uh, follow up through and follow up and follow through, maintain communication and honor any commitments you make. Honoring commitments, this is equally an important personality trait, personality trait to develop. If you say I will do this, try to do it. Today was really difficult. I won't lie with you. I had so many things to do. I had so many things on my end. Uh, I was jumping into the call when a visitor was just leaving my house. So I, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't expect that the person might will come. So, but I had this particular commitment. I had, I told Stefan I'll be available at three o'clock to do this presentation. So, I did everything to be here. So honor your commitments, no matter how hard it might be. Sometimes you have to go out of your way. You might sacrifice, but that's how you do to keep connections and to always rely on your connections. So the next and the last points will be managing professional relationships. Your professional relationship might be now if you're working. You know, we might at some point, at every point in life, maybe we get into the professional world, you always, you always have to manage your professional relationship, which is not an easy task. Because getting out there means getting people, getting to meet people of diverse backgrounds, diverse religious backgrounds, diverse social backgrounds, diverse cultures, diverse personalities, diverse ways of being, and every other diverse thing you might think about. And then who don't, they don't think about you like you, or you do. They have different perspectives of the world. They have different views, which, aren't necessarily wrong. It's not because you might think yours is right, the other people's perspectives are wrong, no. So how do you manage this? How do you manage your network? So the first thing is to cultivate trust. Be reliable, confidential, and deliver on promises to build trust. So among your people around you, people you, are numerous people you have to meet around you, you have to, to, to be confidential and to develop trust. Then handle handling conflicts. You know, there's no need. It's, it, it's something that's always, you know, we always have to, to think about conflict management. We cannot do without conflict, unfortunately. This is not something we can we can do without. So how do we manage it when it comes up? I have a friend who was telling me, uh, he is, a, I think he, he has subordinates. So uh, the way he networks with them, he, he would tell them, okay, uh, today you might see the bright side of me. You're starting this job now. Uh, you you see me laughing, but let me tell you, there's a point in time where we'll have stress, there'll be pressure, and then uh, we might conflict. And then how do we? If if you have to conflict, these are ways we have we can still think how to solve that. You know, he already has here. He has already uh, had ways to man handling the conflicts. So that's the same thing we have to do with our networks. You address your conflicts professionally and return at every point. So embrace people's diversities, respect their cultures, and 
Yeah, you know, you don't have to abide to their culture, but you just respect it. And networking beyond events. Networking is an ongoing process, not limited to specific occasions. So be beyond that particular conference you had, beyond one particular thing, if you to collect a number and you're interested in, the, in, in creating a deep relationship or network, not working relationship with the person, you could as well get to connect with them in other, in other context. Maybe invite them out for dinner, invite them out for over a coffee, uh, talk about these things you're interested in, talk about, you know, you might get to get uh, great perspectives about their personality, about their business, about their ideas, or just present to them. Maybe you need a job opportunity, you need somebody who's going to review your CV, somebody who might give you uh, application tips or so. And show appreciation, express gratitude to your network for their support and guidance. Yeah, it's very important. Gratitude is important. You thank them for their availability. You thank them for, if that's the least, if you cannot pay them, at least thank them. That's very important. So I've come to the end of the presentation. <laughs> and I, we, I hope what we, I, I talked about actually is, will help you. Networking is a prof, powerful tool for personal and professional growth. Building strong professional relationships can lead to various opportunities and a fulfilling career. So remember to be genuine, proactive, and to value the connections you make. So yeah, I, I'm slightly above time. So I think, yes, that's it. <laughs> One, that's what I had to share with, with you. Um, wait, am I out of connection also? You're not out of connection. Okay, I think everybody was so <laughs> quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Atricia. So, okay, uh, yeah. yeah, kindly, um, before we just uh, get to the other parts, I guess I uh, we can now leave the session. Me, for... right? Yes, we can hear you. We can yeah, simply just have a Q and A be... session, exactly, and yeah. then uh, probably reactions and comments from uh, the participants who are present. So, please feel free to raise your questions and uh, we'll be able to give the answers which we can provide. And then that's how we are going to make the process much more interactive through this part to the end. Uh, you can leave your interactions, comments or reactions to in the comment section, or you can just raise your hand and I will give you the floor to speak. Anyone? Okay, uh, we have yeah, a hand, Ingebet. Yes, a hand. Hello. Carry on, Ingebet, we can hear you. <laughs> Unfortunately, your, net, your connection is, is poor. Can you please try to shift from where you are? Maybe we can get a good reception. Everyone, okay. Um, I was having difficulties in getting. Oh, sorry. Okay. Hello, is it anyone? It's good now. Go on. Okay, okay. I was actually having difficulties, um, getting all what. Uh, was said but i picked up a lot and i have a question on, on uh, i have a question on mutual benefit i have a question on mutual benefit what do you evaluate like uh, if you if you detect that change if you detect that the the benefits are not mutual like Let's say the other the other person on the other side, if you detect that the person is not um, genuine and their intentions are not really um, on mutual basis, like it's on one side that they are drawing all the benefits to themselves. What do you do about cases like that? Uh, Patricia, you are going to attempt the question, the answer, or anyone? Yeah. 
okay, I have a clearer comprehension and maybe want to provide a, an answer, could do that as well. Uh, the question was, how do you manage uh, on mutually beneficial, beneficial networks? Networks that are not beneficial on both counts. Rather, it's more like one-sided, one person probably trying to gain off you rather than uh, you gaining mutually from the uh, network. Okay. So uh, I'll start by saying that <laughs> this at this point in time, if you, you feel like you're giving more than the person is, it, it's, it's giving you, it's, it's a critical condition. But remember, you are the person who is giving. So, so let's first of all define like what type of network is it? Is it maybe if it's a friendship or, you know, it could be a friendship where the person, uh, I mean, you get to communicate with the person. And I think this at this point in time, you might talk to the person, like if it's really uh, personal, you might get to the person, if you, you're close to the person, you tell them, okay, I feel like you could have supported me at this level, you didn't. I feel like you would have done this, you didn't know. Communication is very important. You tell them, and maybe they didn't even know that that's how they are reacting and they might try to adjust because you could have friends. Today, people do it a lot. You, they say, okay, I have my business. Could you please support me to share? Could you do this? So those, those are the least things, that's the least you could do. But if it's a, a relationship which is professional, like uh, uh, somebody who is not of your age group or maybe who comes up to you for, for, for advice or or maybe for recommendation or any other service or so and then you provide that service and I mean you wouldn't expect that person to be to bring to you what you might need you know the, those are the basics I talked about the basics here those who cannot actually bring to their networks what they want or maybe you feel that your network has all you might give you you might want to give them through text messages greetings, those are the least you could do. But if the person, like I said, is somebody you know personally, you could get to them to tell them about the fact that you think that your the relationship is not something that's that's you know beneficial for both of you. And then you tell them what you think that relationship for it to get to go better, for it to to, to advance to a certain particular step. That's a relationship where you you might you know for it to advance, you should, the person should give themselves and then try to, 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 to make it beneficial one, on one way or the, uh, or the other. I don't, I don't know whether I've tried to, add, I've attempted to answer the question. So. Yes, it's, and it's If somebody has clear, something to add, they, they, could, they could add as well. Thank you very much. Okay, Angelique, uh, you're welcome. We understand that uh, right here okay. we have persons too from very diverse backgrounds. And so, I, I have another question still in that same light because. Uh, Go on, Ingebert, we are listening. I have another question in that same light. Since this topic of networking, I experience so. Uh, how do you good? How do you differentiate between a good connection and a bad? I guess we lost him there again, and he was asking the question: How do we differentiate between a good network and a bad network? I don't know if I got you right. If it's okay, you could type it in the chat section, and then we'll be sure to give you a response because your network is it's, your connection is breaking up from where you are. I think that was his question. Uh, I don't know if I, I should proceed with answering because it's better we have him so we, we could provide an answer that he's, he's, he's going to have on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. My network oh, okay. on this other side is messing up. All right. Okay. So you were saying that how do we differentiate between the bad connection and a good connection? Yes, that's the question. Oh, I will say like generally what we say in the Bible from the fruits, <laughs> from the fruits, a good tree yeah. will produce good fruits, <laughs> a bad tree will produce bad fruits. So that's obvious. Definitely. So, but at times yes. it's difficult to just detect that from a glance. Like 
you need to get into yeah. active mm -hmm. communication and then you later find that out like towards the middle or maybe when you've been touched like when yeah. you're really disappointed yeah i get maybe your point I yeah I believe he's giving the answer to his own question somehow. Yeah. Because somehow he's, he's getting the answer himself. And it's it's normal yeah. that uh, it's normal that from the very get-go, it's not very easy to tell. So it's not something you can simply tell apart from the very yeah. beginning. You can only know as a result of getting to live with that person and getting to know the person and how your affairs and your dealings with that person are before you can actually get to know that they are a bad network or a good network. So it's all about it's all about giving time for the for the relationship to mature. Then once it matures, then you're able to verify for yourself if it's worthwhile or it's something you can throw. Uh, I always make it a point of reference that, in my opinion, there are no entirely very bad networks. But this is my opinion, so it's not like it's what is generally accepted or accepted or fact proven. But my opinion in that. Even the bad networks that you consider bad have networks have a lesson to teach you. They have yeah. a lesson to teach you. And in every step of the way, I've had an opportunity to learn from the ones who think that they are probably using me. And uh, you get to learn about the various techniques and how people can maneuver you in order to get something out of you. And the truth is that people want to get something out of you, like it or not. If you get into a connection with somebody, if, if the person doesn't feel that there's something they can get from you, they won't connect with you from the very beginning. So first, the first thing right. you need to know, we are first of all selfish before we, are, before we start uh, uh, bringing in the aspect of, okay, let me You're be right. unselfish a little bit and then try to give back as much as I receive. But I always go with the policy of give as much as you can give until you have no more to give because you can only give from what you have. And once I give and I notice that it keeps giving me that reciprocal negative effect, I think it's time for me to purge the network. I purge it, but I leave the connection very, uh, very cordial. Cordial in the sense that tomorrow somehow I may need your help and I may not know when that may come in. For example, I to give a practical example. I had a very bad network recently with someone, but the guy was into uh, this interurban transport. He often never kept to time. He never really ever bothered about something. On He was only on time when it, it, it benefited him. And if it didn't benefit him, he was never going to be on time. And he will give you every excuse at every point in time. But I just told him, okay, fine and good. We are facing these difficulties and we are moving forward. But I don't think I will be willing to call you up for the next uh, event or something of that sort because I will not want to be let down because of time. But there was a point where I was amongst uh, traveling out of uh, a very risky zone into another risky area, and he was the only safety net for me. And he was the only one who was daring enough to go through it. So if I had killed the network in the most negative way possible, I doubt where I would have gotten, I would have gotten his assistance during that time. So that's why I say even the most unbeneficial network still has a value which they can offer you at any given point in time and they may even do it for a penny or, or less see. just for a thank you or an appreciation so that's why i say there's no bad network per se but it depends on how you manage your network and how you manage your relationships with people yeah uh, that is clear thank you very much i totally agree with you totally agree with you i am um, I'm good. Thank you very much. All right. We have a reaction from the chat box from Flavian. He says, uh, thank you so much, Mama Tricia, for the input. My question goes thus. What's the importance of this networking to someone who wants to become a pastor or a priest? Because from the presentation, I feel it's more of business oriented. <laughs> uh, Tricia, I want to give it a try first, and then we see how other persons can uh, substitute their inputs from okay, there. Uh... Okay. All right, uh, Flavian. Uh, yeah, well, sorry if you, if you feel like this, this was more business, but 
whatever I said during my speech applies to every network or every relationship we want, we want to build. So somebody you appreciate, let's talk that you look up to. Somebody whose qualities or what they embody actually speak to you as a person, somebody you want to look or be like if, if you enter the priesthood, then you could make them your network as well. You know, you look at those things, you get to them, you get to connect with them uh, and talk to, talk to them and ask them, like, maybe what's your secret, how they, did, did, how they do this or that, you know, that's very, I grew up in a family of priests, you know, my uncle is a, is a priest and uh, he's one of the people I look the most of the, the, up to in terms of personality, in terms of his personality and qualities. And I know many young people uh, who are his men mentees. And uh, yeah, I think this applies. And even with him, though he's my uncle, and though he he's always available to support me or one in one way or the other, he's always available for this advice or so. I sometimes realize that at, in point, at some points in time where he needs, for example, he actually requests for my attention. Not requesting like, okay, no, you know, but he would tell you, why can't you call me to greet me? Why can't you message me? Why can't you, you know, these things that generally we say, okay, well, he's just an uncle or two, but you know, these things that you could do, which are very basic, and then you tend not to do. So for somebody who wants to be a priest, networking is as well very important. And let me tell you, We are losing you. Uh, Unfortunately, we can barely hear you, Mama Trisha. <laughs> The people, the fish is your call to catch as a priest. The, 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 uh, okay, try to speak now. Let's see if it, it if it works. We almost lost you there. Okay, I, I guess uh, we probably lost her there. She will be back with us shortly. But in response to your question, again, just my own few inputs on this point too. Mm -hmm. Networking is something that is invaluable, irrespective of uh, what particular walk of life you are in. And uh, it would equally go across the same for every person in every sector, including those who wish to become pastors, who do, those who wish to become priests. Uh, and it's very, very, very important because within a network system, you notice that for you to, to equally make the most out of your spiritual journey, since it's what your question is centered around that, for you to make progress in your spiritual journey, you definitely need to know some of the persons whom you can tend to, to give you uh, support and advice. And at times you might need persons who may be your spiritual directors. You may need persons who may be your, your guidance and uh, your counselors. And uh, you may even need a confessor. So you need to identify some of these persons. And uh, it's in the ability to network, the ability to, to reach out to persons that you would be able to make good connections with this particular set of persons within your circle or within your walk of life in order to get what you, you, you require in order to advance in your spiritual upliftment. So I believe networking is something that goes far and beyond and it's, it cuts across even religions too as well. So um, it's, it's, it's not something that limits you because at every point in time, you would meet another fellow human being. So I just wish you to understand networking from the perspective of, of uh, you partner, meeting up with different human persons along the course of your journey. So how do you meet up with this person and then be able to get uh, the help you need or the assistance you need or, or give the help and assistance you envisage to give to humanity? Because I believe if someone like you wishes to get something out of this, you are out there because you wish to be able to uh, and build up the spiritual well-being of others. 
And if you wish to build the spiritual well-being of others, you need to learn how to effectively communicate, to effectively network in order to bring this person to yourself such that you can guide them and then you lead them as a result of. So I think it's something that cuts across every walk of life and it's not limited to one particular sector or walk of life. Uh, I don't know if you've gotten uh, the answer to your question. And please, anyone who has a, a reaction to make in response to this, please kindly just raise your hand and give you the floor maybe to chip in a few words. Uh, we have a hand. I would like to have a hand from some other person who has not spoken. Uh, we have several other persons here who have not spoken, but please, if you have a reaction, just so that we can hear you too. If not, I'll go for the person whose hand is up. Any other person who wishes to react to this point? If not, then uh, we can get the reaction of the person who raised their hand. Engabet, please shoot so that we don't waste time. Okay, just to add, just to add to what you said, um, networking, as defined by Mom Otricia, says here that networking uh, helps in uh, a process of establishing and nurturing relationships that has to apply with every field, every area. So effective yeah. communication too is something that has that has to do a lot with networking and mm -hmm. in a religious from a religious perspective priests clergymen pastors and all the like they have a lot to do with effective communication so that one we are not leaving out networking does not leave out um, priests it does not leave out religious it does not leave out pastors that's just what i wanted to add thank you thank you very much for those insights Engelbert. thank you very much very insightful very insightful Thank you. And any other reaction? A it's question? A pleasure. Sure. I would like to hear from some other person who has not spoken, please. <laughs> okay, so if we are not getting any reaction. If we are not getting any reactions, I think we can leave the Q&A session for now and then we move on to Final remarks and uh, closing remarks for the meeting of this day for this uh, webinar series on uh, networking and professional relationships. And uh, I wouldn't wish, I just wish to give a few highlights. Hello, since Stephen had issues with his connection, or oh, I think he has. Hello, are you getting me? Hello, Jebel. Hello. Okay. It seems Stephen has issues with his connection. Uh, okay. I'm you. finding difficult to hear you. It's I don't know. The network today is really poor. Oh, so generally, I think he was talking about the ending remarks. Uh, yeah, it's ending remarks, and uh, I think that was to call the day off. Okay. 
So I should give my remarks on the session of today. Breaking the lot today. Hello. Yeah. yeah, hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah, you could go on and be when getting you. Hello. Hello. Yes. Oh my god. Oh, well, network is really poor. I don't know if any other person has a, a remark to give regarding the session. The person could go on. Hello. Yes, I can see you. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hello. Okay. Uh, good. So I should, am I supposed to give my remarks on the session of today? Yes, you can go on. Okay. Um, the session was very interesting, though I, I've, I encountered um, a lot of difficulties with the network, but so far, so good. Um, the topic of today as in networking and professional relationships, I had to learn a lot about networking, knowing that networking is a process of establishing and nurturing relationships that can be beneficial to us personally and to our businesses. And networking helps to build interpersonal skills, confidence and self-awareness. I also got um, the importance of having a support system, then how um, networking helps in business growth and some important points that um, we can use the networking system to develop our business and then how to build a great network. That was a very important point. And we got tips like, uh, we got tips like getting to the people around you. The people around you are your first, are the first people that you can add to your network. That is, if you get, if you get the people around you to be aware of what you're doing, they can easily recommend and refer you to others. And then you can also build a good network um, through social media platforms using uh, LinkedIn as one of the most, one of uh, the important platforms for networking in social media, and then community development, volunteering, and then building strong professional relationships too. And to be able to network well, you also have to net nurture characteristics like uh, being genuine, honesty, being sincere, being approachable. And then you engage in active listening, showing interest in meaningful conversations and contributing if necessary. Then you also get to that point of mutual benefits where I had, um, I had an experience, I've had experiences about that. And uh, we know that uh, mutual benefits in a network, it's a two-way two game such that both parties, it's either you're giving to receive. And I've also learned that you have to maintain, to maintain your relationships with your network. And then you also have to support others by like nourishing their network or sharing, sharing what the network, uh, sharing what, what they actually do. So that is what I, I got from all that and a lot more and then. Hello. Hello. It's like the network is breaking. Hello.
this is not serious. Thank you very much uh, for Thank you very much for for taking over the session. I lost the connection over a, a while ago and I got out of uh, the connection. Sorry about that. And I am simply back online right now. And um, <clears throat> I was just giving a few highlights for the session before I got kicked out. And uh, the few highlights for the, for the session which we had were diversify your network, attend events, go out of your way, introverts and extroverts strike the mean because the virtue always lies in the mean such that we can always balance out being introverts and being extroverts in the course of uh, getting to meet new persons and then learning how to communicate effectively. And I do believe that uh, the course which we had on effective communication and uh, the, um, the webinar which we had to on effective communication too would be of added value to most of the CIP participants who are here present with us. And then uh, we just hope that we are able to put those into, into use, especially for those who are intro extroverted and uh, introverted. Then um, we equally wish to remind persons to find common interests and then networking tips for success. And then uh, uh, those were the things which were talked touched today. And then we equally talked about if you win an argument, you lose a friend. I think this was not highlighted, but we are highlighting it here because a good number of us can equally get into arguments too easily. Uh, somebody says something you don't like, and then you pick an argument with the person, and there you go. But know fully well that once you pick an argument with someone and you win the argument, you lose a friend as a result. So it's always important to avoid arguments, especially if you're in the world of communication, in the world of networking, try as much as possible in order to avoid arguments. Agree to disagree. And then uh, put your network over time, but keep it cordial. I think I emphasized this over one of the questions which was asked earlier. And then uh, nurture your network before you get give. And uh, that includes skills, it includes time, it includes volunteering. And then build trust and rapport with your network because it's through that trust building that others will be able to reach out to you and then uh, probably yeah, yeah. Even recommend you. Even recommend you for other opportunities and other uh, openings that may arise in the near future. And then um, we were equally talking about um, honor the commitments one makes. I think uh, Madam Otricia took her time to really emphasize on this. If you say you're going to be here at this particular time, make sure you're there at that particular time. If you cannot make it, it's always best to give a heads up way earlier ahead of time, such that the person whom you had given your word to may re-strategize and do something worthwhile. And then learn to manage conflicts. And in this, we'll talk about learn how to listen and learn, then agree to disagree. Oftentimes you may get to somebody in a, uh, in a communication with someone who is probably above your age or maybe above your rank and your office and uh, or below, far below, and they're struggling to tell you something that uh, you may think it's not worthwhile. Oftentimes it's good for you to strike the mean of learning how to listen and then learn from what they are trying to say. And when we talk about listen, listening, we are not talking about just merely being there and then letting the person blab and go, well, your, your head is in the clouds and you're wondering about some other thing, but actively listening. Listen and then get the points which the person is trying to make because it's only in listening that we can understand another person's viewpoint and then make the most out of that experience. And then uh, show appreciation. Showing appreciation here, it's very, very important. And I think uh, Ms. Tricia uh, said that very much in uh, her presentation as she emphasized the need for you to say thank you. At times, you may not be monetary. You might not even give someone monetary uh, um, uh, payment for something that you have done, but just to be able to appreciate them and do it from a place of genuineness, be genuine about your appreciation. Your appreciation should not be something which is half-hearted. It should be genuine. It should come from within you. So don't, and then make others feel important. And when you're making others feel important, don't do it in the form of flattery. It's not that I'm encouraging flattery here, but what I'm encouraging or what I wish to send across is um, 
you are making others feel important by being genuine about it. Find something that is really true about that person. Highlight that particular attribute. Make them important in that event. And I cannot overemphasize the importance of uh, Ms. Patricia's presence in my life and uh, in her time in making this presentation worthwhile. And uh, she's not just one of the very first persons. I've had a very good and effective team here. Myself, Dr. Yawat, and uh, Madam Bernadette, they are people whom I regard of put at very high importance and their value to me has been very great. So we learn how to appreciate them and then we make them feel important. That way, persons took it to you. And it's, uh, it's one of the oldest tricks in the book. And every one of us wants to be important. So never dis disregard another person and then thinking that by demeaning them, you are doing them any good. We all want to feel important. So make people feel important. Appreciate people for the little things they do. Even if it's just lending you a hand to walk down the step, or it's maybe stopping a taxi or opening the door of a car for you, etc. Small basic things, learn to just say thank you and appreciate them for those little things. Those are things that really go a long way to really nurture very wonderful and lifelong relationships and networks. So I think uh, we'll leave it at that for highlights of what uh, was discussed in today's session. And um, just a few more things which we wish to touch here. I think we had the chance to go through all the HP Live courses and the topics which we have all undergone have been ticked except for two, which you see in the round bullet points, emotional intelligence and well-being, protection from sexual exploitation and abuse. That's based on the curriculum of those who are following this webinar series on the CIP learning program where they intend to get a certification at the end of the day. So for those particular set of persons, they will still have to complete this set of other webinar sessions. And those of you who are joining us who are not part of the CIP program per se, you're equally invited to always participate in all the other sessions because no knowledge is use, it's useless. It's all valuable to us. And um, what are our next steps? Next webinar will be on Monday on the topics, emotional intelligence, uh, protection from sexual exploitation and abuse. And then as for the closing ceremony, we shall have it on the 3rd of August. That's Thursday, the 3rd of August and the deliverables. That is for those within the CIP program. As for subsequent webinars, we will, uh, we will uh, notify you about the next coming webinar series, which will be taking place in August, given the time as we move ahead. And um, Likewise, we have been your hosts, myself, Stephen, who is the program's director, Dr. Yawas, who is the program's manager, and uh, Madam Bernadette, who is the participant's manager. And uh, we've all been here to provide you the assistance on the CIP program and the platform. And uh, at CIP, we always say, CIP, put on mute, on mute yourselves and let's do this together. CIP. Engage the mind. CIP. Dare to think. CIP. Change the narrative. And that's our vision. We wish to engage the mind. We wish others to dare to think. Think for yourself and then to change the narrative. There's a lot that we need to change in our society and it begins with our mentality and with our mindset. And like we said, if you need any help or assistance somewhat at any given point in time, you feel free to write us on uh, programs at kairosfoundation.one or you can simply reach us through the contact number below and you can equally use the contact number to reach us on WhatsApp. Then for uh, the CIP participants, if you have any worries or assistance somewhere, you can always leave a comment a, in the, the WhatsApp platform and we'll be sure to reach back to you. And then just one last thing, I just wish to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to uh, Ms. Otricia for her time and her dedication in uh, making this presentation possible. We really give you a, a hearty thank you for your presence and for your presentation. It's been so wonderful and enriching. I guess I'm not, I don't say this by my own words, but I would like to encourage the others to unmute themselves and then say the word to you themselves. Please feel free to just say thank you and appreciate Madam Patricia. I think it's I think it's the least we can do for now. I think we've lost a good number of them. 
you are forever. Yeah. Thank you very much, Madam Patricia. It's like I'm the only one here. Where the other? <laughs> they are all yes, here, but just that they probably. Timid. Thank you so so you much. Very timid. Uh... Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much, Madam Patricia. I think uh, this has been a very wonderful program uh, today, and uh, we would have this put up on our YouTube uh, platform, and then it will be shared with you. Uh, the links once the videos are available, we'll make sure they are shareable for persons who wish to uh, have a rebroadcast of it, or maybe simply what was covered in today's webinar session. Thank you very much. And uh, just one last thing before we go, there is a pool running on screen. Uh, I would just like us to take our time to respond to the pool, if it if you don't mind, if you don't feel like it, it's okay. It's just for us to get an insider on uh, who was on the webinar, etc. Just take your time to complete the webinar, uh, the, um, the webinar insider, the pool which is running on your screen, and then we see how to go. So far, four persons have participated. So thank you very much uh, for your inputs on uh, the insider. Okay, I think I should be ending it in a few seconds from now. Um, and there it goes. Here are the results and based on what we got, um, we have a... 67 percent who say they got they are cip participants and 33 percent who say they are not and then uh, we have uh, how you got to hear about it 33 percent said from a friend a uh, hundred percent said on whatsapp and then uh, we had um 33 percent from west africa and 33 percent from uh, east africa and 33 percent from asia and oceania and uh, lastly how would you, would you like to participate? And we have a 100% uh, agreed on wishing to participate in the next webinar. So um, uh, uh, for those who are not here, please, could you just kindly type uh, your email in the chat section such that I'll be sure to send you the reminder for the webinar and uh, for the next webinar. Thank you. And... Thank you very much for your time and uh, for taking out the time to fill out today's webinar. It was a pleasure and I really appreciate your time and your efforts. Thank you very much and uh, do have a blessed day. Nui, a blessed night, Madam Patricia. I'm very, very grateful. And uh, O'Neill Dossel, I hope I pronounced the name well. Uh, if you could kindly leave your email uh, in the chat section, I'll be sure to send you uh, an update for the next webinar series. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm.
Thank you, O'Neill. I just received it and uh, I am adding that to the list. Uh, it, it was a pleasure having you on uh, the program today. Very, very much appreciated. And do have a blessed day.